guys. Today I have a review for you. Today I will be reviewing The History of Love by Nicole Krause. Okay, I want to start off by saying that when I got this book, I had no idea what it was and no intention of picking it up. When I actually did physically put it in my hands, it was only to show my friend at the bookstore that I thought the cover was really ugly. <laughs> it is not a great cover. At all. However, I was really surprised when I opened the first page and read the first line. You know, the title makes you think it's going to be some really sappy story, but the first line is actually kind of hilarious. So I decided that I was going to pick it up. Also, probably the main reason that I picked this up was because inside of it was this. The bookstore that I went to, they allow customers to come in and like write their own reviews of books and like stick them in so that other customers will know how the book is. And this one basically says that even though the cover's ugly and the title's dumb, this book is really fantastic and you should read it and it, it's just great and it lives up to all the hype. And I have to say that going into this book with a blank slate just opened me up to have a really great reading experience and I really love this book. Nicole Krauss uses some really just gorgeous, gorgeous sentences and her writing is absolutely marvelous. She has these sentences that you just want to close the book after reading and take a minute to think about life and it's really great. Okay, so let me get into some actual plot summary without being too spoilery. So this book is told from a couple of different perspectives. It's kind of like a Jodie Picoult novel. Picoult? I don't know if I'm saying that right. I never know if I'm saying that right. Eventually, all of the perspectives come together, kind of. It's a little bit weird because there are two main perspectives and then there are two other ones that aren't as important. They're only background characters. They don't do much for the narrative. But the two main characters are Leo and Alma. Leo, I would say, is pretty much the main character. His backstory is that he lived in Poland in World War II and when he was 10 he fell in love with his neighbor and they had this brief romance for 10 years until she had to go to America when things got a little r too rough in Poland and he had to stay behind and he wrote her this book. So he goes and follows her years after the fact to Manhattan and he finds her there and he's never stopped loving her. But he finds her married and raising a son who she tells him is his. When the story starts he's telling you this and he is an old man and he is still living in Manhattan and he knows that he's going to die and he's kind of just waiting for it. The second character's name is Alma and she is, I'm gonna say 13 to 15. She lives with her mother and her brother. Her father has passed away. Named after a character in her parents' favorite book. And she's very interested to see who this character is in real life. The structure that this book is told in is pretty interesting. Leo's chapters are pretty standardly written, as are a couple of the other ones, but Alma's chapters are a little different. They're structured through lists, and Alma likes making lists. So instead of just being paragraph after paragraph, it'll be a number, a title, and then the paragraph. Another number, a title, and then a paragraph. And the title just kind of sums up what is going on in the paragraph, or sometimes the title can be read as a line itself. And finally, when the characters do meet up, instead of it being told from one character's perspective, Prowse allows you to hear it in, I guess, real time in the characters' lives, being told from all of their perspectives. So it'll be on one page, one person, on the next page, another person's thoughts. It kind of looks like this, where you'll get one character's reaction to what's happening and then another character's reaction to what's happening. I thought that was really interesting. Overall, I give this book a 5 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I think it might be my new favorite book. It's really fabulous, and it's really, really heartbreaking and tragic, but it's such a good read, and it's definitely worth it. Alright, so if you like this review, like and subscribe to me. If you want some more of me, I am at littlethings.tumblr.com. I'm going to put that in the bio because it's kind of spelt weird and it has underscores. And if you have any books you want me to review or you have anything I want to talk about, please leave it in the comments as well as any feedback that you have for me. I love to hear it. Alright, I'll see you later.